Father, even as we continue on this conversation this afternoon, we ask that your spirit would alight on every word that will be spoken. Amen. Let it become a basis by which transformation will be engendered. Amen. And Lord, you said, well, those who feared your name sat and spake one to another and a book of remembrance was written for them that feared the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Let this become a basis for another memorial in the spirit Amen. that will be remembered and will be blessed. Amen. And Lord, empower us even from this interaction. Let Amen. witnesses overlap, creating Amen. a system in the spirit Amen. that will bring an empowerment that will make us more effective in kingdom advancement. Amen. Thank you because there will be healing provided on account of this conversation. Amen. There will be illumination, there will be enlightenment, and there will Amen. be empowerment. Amen. That everyone who would listen will be blessed amen and your name will be glorified amen in jesus precious name amen 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 amen, amen. So, thank you sir guys thank you sir <laughs> <laughs>
So these are fallen angels. They are not demons. Demons possess people. Yes, sir. But fallen angels possess territories. Hey. They possess systems. Hmm. They possess atmospheres so that they can exert government. And the way they do it is that principalities come first. When principalities come to a territory, they map it. Mm -hmm. So they find out the graces that are there. There are people who are prophetic, so they are, they are quick in picking signals. The principalities know them. And he knows the kinds of weaknesses that affect those people. Mm -hmm. There are people who have the gift of faith, so they are authoritative. Mm -hmm. The principalities know. So why these ones who have power fall to pride, the ones who are discerning fall to sexual, emotional issues. So the job of the principality is to create a mapping. When he creates that mapping and creates a quadrant, mm -hmm. the powers come. Mm. The duty of the powers is to create addictions. So if the principality comes to a neighborhood, there are prophetic people here. He creates a system that will facilitate seduction. Oh, wow. So you find people begin to dress naked. Mm. People begin to do all of those things. Yeah, yeah. He's targeting those who are emotionally intelligent, emotionally mm. sensitive and mm. highly discerning mm -hmm. so that he can weaken them. All these systems will make it easy for the powers to come. So when we are, he said, we rest not against against flesh, but principalities and powers. powers. It begins, first of all, with trends. It begins with the operational modalities of mm. a territory. That's mm. the structure of principality. So mm. one of our battles is to pull down these things. That's why you see that some of these things that are not scriptural, but we love to practice yeah, them. Yeah. We don't know where they come from. Yeah. We have to fight those yeah, things because yeah. they, that's where the devil traps a generation from. When these things happen, powers now come in. Powers now come to create addictions. So people now are bound, but they don't stop there. Spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness comes. The word rulers is magistrates. Okay. They create a law. Okay. That's when these things become traditions. Ah. They move from trends, they become traditions. Yeah, so you see yeah. that even those who are not under the influence of that systemic operation, they now come under that influence because it's now a pattern. It's, yeah, it's exactly. A yeah, when like they bed, bed they, gang. I know this other stuff. People there, uh -huh. their spiritual wickedness comes. That's where afflictions and all sorts of things come. If you pick one case scenario in Africa, for example, mm -hmm. you look at the case of um, maybe trends around slangs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't know that these things are spiritual systems. Principalities come invest in people who are influential because mm -hmm. they give them the influence mm -hmm. and they start creating slang. You hear everybody saying, it choke me. Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> it choke me. It choke me. <laughs> and then choke. people think it's slang. Yeah. And then they are talking it. Yeah. As it becomes their language, yeah. powers now come and make it become part of their vocabulary. It's an mm -hmm. addiction. Mm -hmm. Even when they are talking in organized forums, they don't know when they utter it. Yeah. As harmless as it looks, because they have said it in the spirit is a law it's because a law. there's no idle word hey. now so they ruler start choking comes and begin to legislate and litigate wow. on the basis of that wow. law wow. so your business begins to choke Eesh. your life gets frustrated you said it you open the gate <laughs> and then now that you have said it and it has become a law spiritual wickedness come and they use it to afflict you Our and you think it's a, a, a harmless trend but it's a complex intelligence this is what you are seeing happening in our music today, sounds, vibrations come from yeah. the demonic realm. Yeah. And people who are not discerning yeah. become victim of it. You yeah. hear music from church. Yeah. You begin to feel sexual desire. And you don't know that those vibrations, although it looked harmless, mm -hmm. but they were put together by demonic intelligence. And then we, we've now jumped on it and try and put a, a Christian twist to it. And from there, a whole government in darkness is established. And people become victims. Because uh, they don't have discernment. Uh, One of the things the devil is fighting is our discernment. <laughs> oh Lord, where do I go from from this one now? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, because I can keep going, I can keep going, but don't. I want to. I want to break it into you. So, when you had to get married, what are the things that um, you looked out for? Yes. So. It's a confession time. It's a confession. <laughs> I mean, I'm good. I have another one after this one. I have another okay, question so, after um, this one. I, I, I noticed that yeah. um, while growing up, yeah. maybe I was, that is still part of these things we it's, share. Yeah, maybe yeah. from the movies, we yeah. were we open to watching as children. Yeah. I discovered that I built an image in my heart. Okay. What people will call spec. Yeah. 
Probably because when we were growing up, movies we were watching, all the stars would be tall, yeah. fair, yeah, elegant. True. Yeah. So I had this imagery in my heart. My wife would be tall, fair. In fact, I wanted to marry Brazilian ladies. Eh, That's you people. see that. Yeah. In fact, at a point, I if I, I I was attracted to Indians. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean tall, that generation. Fair. So you're about. Let me guess. You should be in in forties now. I so. was born in the eighties. In the eighties. <laughs> so, so, so you, you were see, listening to all those we songs. We followed all of this thing. Started loving this thing. So when I wanted to get married, that was an idol in my heart. Hey. So it took God time to break it. Hmm. I have to marry His choice. I have to marry His will. But I couldn't. I struggled for a long time. Hmm. So eventually, I knew that. As touching marriage, yeah. first of all, my emotion has to be reconstructed. Okay. Because I wanted to marry what I liked, not what not God would God want for me. Hey, hey, hey. And up until a year or two to the time of marriage, mm-hmm. I was still held into this thing. I had that in my mind. And when you are a bit mentally inclined, you have mm-hmm. a strong mind, mm-hmm. it becomes difficult for these things to happen. Mm-hmm. Until mm-hmm. God helped me, started listening to messages. And these apostolic messages on yeah. the will of God, the yeah. will of God, the yeah. will of God. Yeah. It was after a while that that stronghold began to break. And I remember telling God, okay, whatever or whoever you lead me to, whatever the person looks like, if it's your choice, I know you know what's Holy good for Spirit me. Holy Spirit played with me on that too. When I and, said, uh, you know, I'm whatever you. you pick, whatever, he played on me on that. Because you don't show me one girl. What if, what if I say this one? Ah. And she's limping. Not that you know there's an issue with people. Just to are test like, yeah, just the, to the test. sincerity of your, your yeah, prayer. But yeah. eventually, when you speak to God like that, God will always make something beautiful out of it. Yes, sir. And God led me to I discovered that my desires began to change. Okay. Because I began to understand a few things more. That's when God taught me that the principle of relationship is a journey mm-hmm. from love mm-hmm. or emotions, attractions. To understanding and then to trust. Uh, run down again so that From they will hear it. Love, love. to understanding mm-hmm. and then to trust. Okay. He said you will be attracted to someone, mm-hmm. but after a while you get to discover that what will matter to you more is the degree to which the person understands and connects to you. Yes, sir. And if you get married to someone and that understanding is not there, mm-hmm. even if that person looks like a goddess, yeah, you will discover that. You, not, a point will come you might even hate the person yeah, exactly it's you not by no beauty. longer be conscious of the looks mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. understanding weighs more on the scales than looks that triggers affection <laughs> and then he said the point would even come eventually that you have to become someone with the person that you trust the person's motives you trust that the person can cover can stand and mm-hmm. you know support your ordination Man. the moment that understanding came to me the strongholds began to break and eventually to the mercy of god he gave me a beautiful wife which I thank him for. <laughs> but I now started changing my priorities. Okay. So I looked for a woman who is kingdom-oriented. Okay. I said, if I want to marry a lady, I'll ask her. Okay. If I don't have anything, God can tell me, empty every money you have today. Oh, wow. I wouldn't need consultation. <laughs> God can tell me, leave Nigeria today, go to Zimbabwe, I will move. Go to Mozambique, go to, I will move. Will the person be willing to let go of everything any day, any time? And then and, move along. And move. And then number two, I said, God will have me raise people. I'll need a woman who has the largeness of heart and also the mental power to be able to raise a people who are refined, who fear God, Mm -hmm. and who can stand as nobles, Mm -hmm. as kings and princes to address a generation. Mm -hmm. So for me, intelligence and large-heartedness. So all of these values began to replace and then I said, my life will come with a lot of battles. Yeah. That's the apostolic calling. Yeah. I need a woman who has capacity to pray. Because many times I won't be able to pray. So if you don't love prayer, if you don't love intercession, this thing might not work. Mm. So mm. when I got into dating eventually, I had to test run all of these things. So all these calls, somebody, happy birthday, this, sometimes I deliberately skipped it. Is it a big deal to you? If it's not a big deal, ah, so I take it, something. It's a big deal to them. I had to check it. I'm telling you. My <laughs> wife knows. Even the ones that are just Most relative. Most of the things that people prioritize, I deliberately began to bring to a kingdom. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. we have to meet and I just call. Oh, sorry. Something came up. I have to travel. Mm-hmm. You Yes, you, you have the right to feel they, bad. Yeah. You have the right to discuss, talk yeah. about it. Yeah. But is this something that every time you will make reference to it, yeah, is it more important yeah, than kingdom? Yeah, I started checking those things because yeah, of the new value system God gave me. Mm-hmm. I started test running. Oh, and wow. when I saw that to a large extent, some of these things aligned and the ones that didn't align, there was a room for it to happen. 
or to, for improvement. I now that. felt okay. This is the direction to go. I love that. I and sent so we my. So started praying together. I love that. So I sent my cousin to um, give my wife. Before. She was a student then mm. on university here. Um, we sent on an errand to a supermarket that we own, but she mm. doesn't know we own it. And we intentionally forgot the money and the change with mm. her, and asked her for it like a month plus later. And she brought everything, even with rubber band back and all of that. And, uh, this one won't steal. So you check with your value systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my value systems were wrong. It took a lot of time for God to begin to change to them. Unwrap when it. he gave me the new value systems, I had to make sure to a very large extent the person aligned. I know there are people who want to marry, they hear Mata, yeah. they hear Teresa, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I know the other people who want to marry, God shows them the vision of the person, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But it's not everybody that has the privilege of hearing that clearly. Yes, sir. But if you are a kingdom person, God will give you a value system. And when you find a woman, yeah. you have to check her along the lines of those value systems. If you see that a good number of them are mm -hmm. met, mm -hmm. and then you also see that even the ones not met, the person is teachable enough to learn them and adopt them, then I think it's a way. But so when do you now take her out? There must be, you know, there's time for retreat. Yes. And there's time for refreshment. Of course, definitely, of course. But yeah. I say these things <laughs> does not mean. In fact, when I started dating, yes, I discovered. I think somebody was living with me then. For two weeks, I spoke with her for more than 100 hours. Oh, wow. And I told myself, come on, what is happening with you? <laughs> I will make a call and I'll be on the call for four hours. I, I call 8 o'clock, I talk to 12. I told myself, are you a Christian? <laughs> what are you discussing? I will make a call, I'll be there for six hours. In the evening, I call again, I talk to 2 a.m. I had to hold myself and say, come on, wake up. What's going on here? You know, so checking this value yeah. system does not mean, you know, yeah. your humanity will not come up. Yes, sir. Uh, you, sir. I mean, you will be lying to yourself. So <laughs> on, in a year, is there a time where you take uh, on a holiday? Most definitely. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, I you see, have to block I some of this advice now. I don't just take my wife out. See, I make her laugh. Sometimes she looks at me and says, you are a politician. <laughs> I will come out of the car, open the door, and say, yeah. "The most pretty woman in the world." Hey, I just say all hey, of these things. Sometimes hey. I'm coming back home, at, on her birthday, for example, I prepared the treat for her, gathered people somewhere, took her there, took her by surprise, and all of those things. Nice. Do these things deliberately yeah, yeah, because it's part of the feminine gender. Exactly. And if you really love someone, you make up time. True. There are times where I take her out on her ways. There are times where I buy just something special. I come and drop it somewhere. She sees it. I say, who brought and all of those jokes and everything just to make her laugh? I love Sometimes that. I say some things. She says, you don't mean it. I know you are just saying it. <laughs> so I make her laugh. I play and, you know, do a lot of uh, comedy. I'm a clown around yeah. my wife. <laughs> so that's the side that people don't see. I love that. I love that. So one of the things that I realized that the, the younger um, versions of and the men generally actually deal with um, most of them, of course, there's a hustle for money. Um, in some cases, maybe power or position. But lust is usually something that just holds. Um, I mean, the marketing gurus already understand this. You know, any small thing. They are trying to sell uh, toothpaste. They will shall make it sexual mm. in one way or the other. They are trying to sell engine oil. It will still be one lady holding the engine oil. And you're wondering how. So how... Is it best to come out of lust and then also then guard yourself? Yes, that's that's very important. There are there are certain arrows that the devil has shot into our generation, and lust is one of them. Distraction is, a, is another one. Okay. Pride is another one. Okay. Laziness and complacency is hey. another one. Okay. You see, okay. so all of these things are arrows. Hmm. But since you've particularly mentioned lust, let, let's deal with it. There was a time that um. I realized that I was so attacked with the spirit of loss. That was when I actually discovered that this thing was a spirit. That it was an attack. Yes, and it was an attack. I used to think people are careless. That's why these things happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, carelessness can make it happen. Mm -hmm. Your eyes, your ears, mm -hmm. your skin mm -hmm. are all gates to your soul. If you watch what you shouldn't watch, hear what you shouldn't watch, hear, so, these things can be shot into you. Mm -hmm. But generally, these are arrows shot into this generation. And if you are not deliberate in shielding yourself, mm -hmm. you can be attacked by these things. Mm -hmm. And I was attacked terribly by lust. Mm -hmm. In fact, it also affected my doctrine. Because I would teach before and tell people fast, pray, and all of that. I fasted, nothing happened. I prayed, nothing happened. In fact, the more I became high in the spirit, the stronger the lust became. Mm -hmm. 
I look at somebody, I want to hug the person. I want to kiss the person. I want to sleep with the person. Mm. I said, what's going on with mm -hmm. me? Mm. You see, so mm. this thing was eating into my soul. Mm. It was at that point that I went to God. I said, what's the cure? And God showed me three things. And these three things helped me. The first thing God showed me is the operation of the law of life. The okay. law of the spirit of life. Okay. That was the first time Romans 7 and Romans 8 made sense to me. When Paul was frustrated, from Romans 7, 20 to 25, Paul identified two laws. He called one the law of the mind or the law of God. And he said, what the law of the mind does is that it, pro it pushes me to do the will of God. He said, but there's another law in my members. And he called it the law of sin and death. Mm. He said, the law of my members counter the law of my mind. The mind. So do I want to serve God? I cannot because the law of sin and death makes it impossible. Paul said he was a wretched man. Say, oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of sin? And then he went to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Yes, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Hmm. He said, the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus have set me free from the law of sin and death. Yeah. Now I have discovered that these things are laws working. Now what do I do? That same scripture now began to open to me. The law of the mind becomes stronger. When you hear and see the things of God. Okay. If you see somebody walking in miracles, you hear somebody preach the word of God, you see that the desire to serve God begins to grow in you. Yes, sir. But that's not enough. You must learn how to keep your members. Because I can come to redemption camp like I've done now mm -hmm. and see the mighty things God is doing through Daddy Geo. Mm -hmm. And then I go back and say, I must be as big as this. What he has done has stirred the law of God in me. Yeah. Desire to do more for God. Yeah. But if I don't guard my eyes, guard my ears, and I expose it to the elements of this world, my emotions will be activated. Mm. The power of the flesh will be activated. Yeah, yeah. And what you will do, it will, it will choke the desire to do the will of God. So Paul now told us that it is in seeing, hearing what God is doing in the lives of others that will stir the law of God. Okay. However, if you leave your your bodies, yeah. your members yeah. carelessly, yeah. and they make contact with what the devil is doing, another law will be activated that will choke you. So you must always give yourself to hearing what God is doing, mm -hmm. seeing what God is doing mm -hmm. to energize the law of God. And then you must keep your body away from the elements of this world, distraction, pornography, lust, and all of that, so that the members will not be strong. And that's not even the solution. He said the most important thing is to activate the law of life that is in Christ Jesus. Okay. And how does that law get activated? He said to be spiritually minded. He now said to be carnally minded is death, is but dead. to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what you do is that you program your mind oh, wow. always to stay within the ambience of God. And now discovered three forces that makes for life and makes for effective living. Number one, is the force of the word. Number two is the force of the presence of God. And number three is the force of the gift of the spirit. If the word of God is strong in you, the word of God will keep you. Okay. Because the word of God, it's in the word of God that the law of life dwells. Psalm 119, verse 9 and 11, it says, how shall a young man keep his ways? Mm. Say, by taking heed unto thy word. Yes. So I don't wait for temptation to come. If I'm reading the Bible and I get tired, and I discover I'm weak. Mm -hmm. I look for somebody who has utterance. I go and hear the word from him. I will hear something that will hit me and charge me up. I will hear something that will stir me up. So somebody is talking and he just gives a testimony. How that he went to Zambia and 10 people dropped crutches. He hunting awakens in me. He charges the law of life in me. So as I'm hearing it, I'm stirred. That stirring is what mortifies the law of sin and death. So that I can do the will of God. Hey. And then number two, I hide in God's presence. He said, him that dwelleth in, in the, the secret, secret place, place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the that Almighty. Of so I don't wait for challenges passage. before yes, I go sir. there. Hey. My people here know, I don't come out of my room unless I want to go to the office or unless I have a journey to make. I stay up there for four to five hours every day with God before hmm. I step out. Because hmm. I know the moment I step out, that day is no longer mine. I'll have to attend to needs. I have to do something. So I seclude myself for the early part of the day. 
waiting upon the Lord. Either I go to the office to stay there or I'm upstairs praying and studying or listening to message. By all means, I saturate myself. And I saw that was what Jesus did. Yes, sir. In Mark 1.35, he said, early, a great while in the morning, he went to a solitary place. Because if you are not full of the presence, your members will make contact with the world. Mm -hmm. So the second thing is to be full of the presence so that the Holy Ghost can mortify the deeds of the flesh. And then finally, your giftings. I discovered something. Any gift you have yes, sir. will demand a consecration. There are those who have a gift that demands worship. So you can just wake up with a song. You discover that you are predisposed to singing. Yeah. It is your gift that is calling for it. That's what feeds it. You find some people, they are predisposed to prayer. Some people are predisposed to studying. It yeah. is the kind of gift you have. If you are a psalmist or a prophet, in, to a very large extent, you want songs. And even the type of song will be recommended. Yeah. There are those who love sorrowful songs. There are those who love high praises. Mm -hmm. All of those things are food for the law of life. And then there are those who like high-powered prayers. So it's either you are praying it or you play somebody who is praying, praying. it to charge you. Yeah. You are servicing that gift. If you pay attention to the consecration demand of your gifting, the law of life will be strong in you. Yeah. So the word, the presence, and the gifting is what energizes the law of life. And the law of life is what kills the law of sin and death. And when the law of sin and death is killed, mm -hmm. you'll be on fire for God doing the will of God. <laughs> These are the things I discovered. Because when lust attacked me, yes, sir. every mechanical thing I knew didn't work. I now went back to the Holy Ghost. What do I do? The Holy Ghost started guiding me. The first thing the Holy Ghost told me was to start singing some songs. And he gave me some ministers. I'll go and collect this song. Yeah. I will pick a dumb one song. I just want to be where you are. And I will be singing it and crying for one week. And something was going on in my soul. Something was going on. After a while, he moved me. He said, fast for 21 days every month. And so January, I fast for 21 days. I stop. February, I begin. March, I begin. He was prescribing things part time. And now discover that the Holy Ghost is the one that will lead you to what you will do to awaken the presence. The Holy Ghost is the one that will lead you to the scripture mm -hmm. that will keep you. Mm -hmm. And it's the one that will show you the consecration. As I am like this, it's not every song I sing. Most of my songs are songs that are drawn. Some of them sound sorrowful. So if I'm not singing a hymn, I'm singing a song that will usually sound sorrowful. Songs mm -hmm. that have this South African kind of yeah. melodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we are drawing it, there's something it does to my soul. All of those things, I discovered it. Because that's what my gift demands. That's how I build the presence, and that's how I step into the world. That's what helps me. Wow. You have uh, heard that this apostle was into <laughs> fornication somewhere. <laughs> because what? when the attack came, it was heavy. Oh, wow. Ah, it was heavy. I go to pray, my mind is noisy. I can't even pray. I carry the Bible, I sleep off. Until God began to help me. And it took me step by step, step by step. But there's an element of patience in that because. It is. You know, some people would not wouldn't want to be patient long enough for all of that. And um, in fact, when those those seasons come, you have to be accountable. Bring yeah. yourself under authority. Yes, sir. I remember I went to the apostle then, and I told him, "This was the challenge. Any lady I see, I want to hug her. I want to kiss her. What's going on?" But yeah. you, that means, but it was nice to have someone that you can talk to. If that you don't have, you have you. a problem. You, you don't have some, a problem. Some people will judge you by it now. Spoken tongues, prayed cast out that dem demon and they said I should go. And then this journey now started. of restoration began. Ah. Ah. So what would you say to a young minister that doesn't actually have anyone? I mean, there's some people that they just uh, hit. Maybe they did one thing, you know, one small thing. You know. mm -hmm. They finally got visa, got to UK, did one program. As is then, they don't <laughs> even talk to anybody anymore once they came back. It's a terrible thing. You know. It's a terrible <laughs> Even Paul, the great apostle, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 2, he said, I went up to Jerusalem by revelation. What did he go to do? To submit what he had received from God to the apostles. He says, so that he will not run in vain. Mm. Meanwhile, in chapter 1, from verse 13 to 16, mm -hmm. he said, the gospel I preach, no man taught me. Mm. I received it from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in chapter 2, from verse 2, he said, I went to revelation, to re Jerusalem by yeah, revelation. By revelation yeah. And he said, he saw Peter and James. And he presented the gospel God gave him. It was then they gave him a hand of fellowship. So everybody, no matter how mighty you are, 
there must be somebody you yes, talk sir. to. Yeah. If you don't have a father, and I'm not going into that subject now, it's yes, a very sir. complex subject. A, yeah, because yeah. there are those who are in systems that are regulated by the governing system. Yes, sir. There must be somebody. Even our fathers today who are patriots, mm -hmm. they are friends that they call. Yes, sir. There's this issue, there's this issue. You must be under some level of accountability. Yes, sir. That's the first level of insurance that everybody has. When I went to Abuja, I had to go and see Dr. Paul. Today, if there's any issue, I did that deliberately so right. that if there's something that I'm not seeing, let somebody be able to call me and say, why did you say this? Yeah. Why did yeah. you do this? Yeah. So that you can also go back and evaluate what you're saying. <laughs> so before you say the Holy Ghost helped you, the presence of God helped you, there must be a, a, a human figure who okay. should be able to talk to you. If you don't have, you should be deliberate. Have somebody who you know loves you and who can tell you the truth and is not afraid of your face. I love that, sir. I love that, sir. All right. So, um, I mean, I could have you here the whole day. What would you tell your younger self? <laughs> don't your be, your eighteen year old self. Don't be in a hurry. <laughs> it's better to be late hey. <laughs> than to move too fast. Okay. I discovered that <laughs> people who are cerebral, yes, sir. they tend to get ahead of themselves. You sit down, somebody's mm -hmm. talking, you already know mm -hmm. where he's going to. Yeah. As far as you are concerned, he's wasting time. Yeah. You, you are just in a rush. <laughs> but the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience obtain okay. the promise. Hey. I've been uh, all my life. Speed, speed, speed. So, do, you, <laughs> do you like driving then? I drive on very high speed. Ah, <laughs> please, so, sir. If I would speak to my younger self, three <laughs> things I would tell myself is, and of course, I'm still working on it, trusting okay. God to help me. Okay. Don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah. Allow God to take you. God works with me very fast. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have to be careful not to be in a rush. Okay. Number two, sustain humility. Hmm. Because that's the key for exhortation. Hey. Because when I was growing up, I was so bold, so vocal. And because I felt I knew one or two things, mm -hmm. I don't really think I need anybody or yeah, anything. Yeah. I know better now. <laughs> you need men. You need God. You need you need a lot of you are you you need a lot of people and a yes, lot sir. of help. Yes, sir. So sustain the disposition of humility. I and like then that. finally, always ask God for mercy and wisdom. Oh. Because if you've done everything, what will really be your greatest insurance is the mercy of God. Hmm. I know it's one thing to meet certain standards that God has prescribed. I understand yeah. process. Yeah. But I tell you, over and above it all, what mm. makes everyone come out strong is the mercy it's of the God. the mercy of God. So I will always tell myself, if I ask God for mercy 15, 20 years ago, probably I would have been a better person now. Ah. So patience, humility, and mercy are I like the things that. I, would, I would have sounded a thousand times into my younger version. <laughs> Well, we give God praise. <laughs> Have you ever felt discouraged at any time? And then how do you pull yourself up? Um, because sometimes, even in this system that we, we are in, I've tried to fight mm. some fights. I'm mm. sure you probably heard some things on some social media that they said that I caught some people something or anyway. And um, I got suspended by the same system I was defending. Um, and that was my second suspension. The first one too was for the same mission, but it's just wonderful. And at that point, I'm like, you know, I just, I won't even like, I just sat back like, you know, well, let me just watch you. But, you know, the Bible says that if you know what is good and you are not doing it, mm. you too, you're as guilty yes. as those who are doing bad things. Yes. So I'm like, oh, man, I need to come back in. But in situations that you've been discouraged, how did you? Yes, so that somebody would learn, maybe I just give you three real life situations and I'll make it very fast. But before I say that, I say that I came, I've come to realize in my life that the lessons I never forget mm -hmm. are the ones I learned in difficult times. Mm -hmm. Most of the mm -hmm. things I learned mm -hmm. in the place of excitement, joy, I've forgotten them. But most of the difficult times of my life, I can recite them. They are still teaching me to date. So I've come to that point where I still thank God for the difficulties in life. First one is um, when my mom died. That was in 2010, 13 years ago. I loved God, passionate, praying, you know, trusting God that everything was possible. Mm -hmm. In fact, those were the times when we're going from churches to churches, 
preaching, doing all forms of choreography and everything. And then my mom that I knew to have been an intercessor all her life, suddenly fell sick briefly and died. Hmm. It so broke me that I was so bitter with God. Hmm. I went back into the world. To me, I wanted to do something that we pain God. Hmm. Went into alcoholism, started clubbing. And it was a terrible one year from 2010 to 2011. And I said, I gave this illustration to say something. There are certain discouragements you will get into mm. that you can't help yourself. God will send somebody else to help you. To help you. For that phase of my life, God sent somebody to pull me out. Mm. And I'm ever grateful for it. Mm. The second discouragement was in 2017 when my only brother died. Ah. Mm. Hmm. I did all the praying. I did all the fasting. I sowed seeds. I brought men of God to pray for him. I was fasting throughout the period. He still died. It was like an arrow thrust into my soul. I wept for months. Hmm. I wept. It broke me. The scriptures didn't make sense. Hmm. Nothing made sense to me. And I would go to lonely places and just wept. Played some songs and I'll just be crying. Because that was the only thing I could do. Mm -hmm. But God in his benevolence began to encounter me again. And it was a fresh encounter altogether. The energy and passion yes, with which I drive today yes, was gotten from that encounter. Oh wow. You know, sometimes when we push the way we push, some mm -hmm. people look at us, they think it's ambition. Okay. Some people look at us, they think it's zeal, it's it's a fleshly zeal, yeah. or it's desire yeah. for no. That the death of my brother took everything from me. So from that period, what I came out from that encounter with is that all I live for is one thing, to please God and to do the will of God and to get back at the devil. Hey. So I want to win as much souls I can, as I can win per day. Okay. I want to see thousands delivered as much as possible. I don't want to hear anybody who fell sick and died. Mm. So something, one, a holy vexation mm -hmm. was activated in my spirit. So the second discouragement, I came out by the mercy of God and encounters. And it's because I was honest to God. In my brokenness, I told him I was disappointed. I told him I was pained. I kept weeping. But he reached into the very deep recesses of my soul and he delivered me. The third one happened about three years ago. Okay. Where I was serving, a lot of controversies came up. People lied, said a lot of things. And so many things went sour. I defended myself. I apologized. I begged. Four times I went to kneel down to beg. This is not so hard to explain myself. Yeah. And everything. And things were wrapped. And I sat down. I said, in the course of this service. Now, when my brother died in 2017. Yeah. My brother died on the 18th. On the 19th, I still went back to the Bible school to do a partition. <laughs> That's to give you an idea of the level of service. Hmm. I didn't receive the grace because God was biased. My heart was genuine and mm -hmm. I served it all my life. Mm. My brother died. I was broken. I didn't even shower. I was the one who went to take him to the mortuary because he died around 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then I returned back the next day to still do impartation because that week I was the one teaching the Bible school. In fact, he was in coma for five days. All through the time he was in coma, I was teaching from morning to evening. I would go to the hospital in the night, sleep in the hospital, come back in the morning. <sighs> Just to give you an idea, the level of commitment and service. The same me is the one everybody's lying against, everybody's talking against. I will go, they will say this, I'll go and need and apologize. <laughs> I will be forgiven. <laughs> they will say another one, I'll go and need and apologize. And it continued like that until everything boom around. If I had my powers, I wouldn't mm -hmm. have wanted it to go that way. Yeah. I became so bitter, not with the man of God, but with the whole people around. What have I done to you? I so see to all of you. Yeah. I respect all of you. And yeah. every day, everybody wants me to go down. What did I do? It broke me so much that a people you call brothers and family, you are talking to somebody, they raise a, a situation. You are explaining your own part. They record it. They go and edit it, take to authority. And this is what you said. <laughs> I said, what kind of, is this church? Is this the house of God? Oh, God. So, <laughs> it pierced into me. In fact, there was a time it started affecting my my messages until the Holy Ghost had to tell me your priesthood will be corrupt. Hmm. 
He said, this is revival. Hmm. And one of the things that happened in revival is separation. Hmm. And he started showing me scriptures. How Paul and Barnabas separated. How they, so it's either persecution will separate you or disagreement will separate you or the Holy Ghost himself will come and say, separate unto me. But by all means, there must be separation for revival to happen. Hmm. Paul and Barnabas argued because of John Mark. Not because they had problem, but John Mark was the issue. Mm -hmm. In the Jerusalem church, persecution scattered them. That yes. was how Philip went to Samaria. Yes, sir. And in the church in Antioch, the Holy Ghost himself came and said, separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas. He says, so that the many expressions mm -hmm. of the graces that are needed for that revival can find expression. So it's not a personal thing. He's a, this is a man of God. He loves you. I've used him to, to impart your life. You are a servant of God. You love him. You honor him. But there's a necessity for the work of God to spread. So mm -hmm. there's nothing personal about it. The problem is the people who allow themselves to be used of the devil, yeah. they would have lost so much from God because they have allowed bitterness, they have allowed pride, they have yeah. allowed all sorts of things yeah. went time to them. And so I now eventually began to pray because I know we are all one in the body of Christ. But that's one very serious issue. And you know the worst part? Yeah. You can't explain yourself in these things. Yeah. Hey. Because the more you talk, the more you are wrong. Yes. So we just kneel down and just... <laughs> you just pray, you <laughs> just cry, and you just ask the Lord to help you. Ah, it's like we are living parallel lives on another side. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that. I was the one who went to bring my brother at mm. some point. I mean, it's ah. all, all as in, yeah. Not yeah. to make sense. Yeah. And then, you know, when other pastors are intentionally hoping you fail, I, I still didn't get that. Like, what do you benefit from? And then the set man is put in a tight corner. Yeah. Everybody's saying all sorts of things. And these things are not true. And the set man or they are taking to be out my of father. Context. In this case. They are taken <laughs> out of context. And then you are watching. You let's not. You just feel the pains. You just have to endure the pains. I mean, now in our own situation, they will, you you're allowed to raise your hand. Permission to speak. It will be like denied. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't so, uh, well anyway. Thank you, sir. I mean, you've done this is confession that you have done here, sir. Without yeah, knowing this is full blow confession yeah, that yeah, you've done here, sir. Um, so on on the slightly on the other side, what kind of gift would you want for your next birthday? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're allowed to ask two things. One can be spiritual, the other one is not allowed to be spiritual. Okay. Um <laughs> honestly. Just in case our sponsors are watching. Honestly, there's a level of power I want, I've not seen in our generation. Hmm. So much wisdom, so much excellence, yes, sir. so much intelligence. Yes, sir. But this is not how the fathers did it. No, no, sir. No, there sir. There's a level of power we have not seen. Thank God we go for meetings once in mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. Somebody drops crutches, somebody mm -hmm. is walking, two mm -hmm. more vanishes. Mm -hmm. But there's a way the fathers possessed certain dimensions in God that you know they have it. I desire to have that tangible expression of God so that when we speak about God audaciously, he should be proven. Yes, sir. Because you can't be talking about the love of God, talking about the power of God, People come with cancer, they go back with cancer. Yeah, that always gets to me. The that blind come, they me. go back. The oh. lame come, they go back. And we are talking yeah, power. We are talking me. process. Mm -hmm. We are talking pay prizes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where is the proof? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know the place of character mm -hmm. that is formed through process. But what caps it all up is power. Is it tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high? Mm -hmm. He said, not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. And when they went out, he said, the Lord walking with them, mm -hmm. confirming the word with signs and wonders. If there's a gift I want God to give me, is that his word or my mouth should not fall to the ground. Mm -hmm. I thank God for the few, th the few things we see. Thomas vanish. People who can walk, walk. The blind see. The deaf hear. But we have not possessed this thing. The way the fathers do it from the place of rest, you know this is dominion. Mm -hmm. And that's why they take their word for Jesus. So I want a tangible dimension of God's power that my words will not fall to the ground. And if there's a second gift I desire is to really build God a house. Ah. I'm in Abuja. 
Abuja is a strange place. Yeah. <laughs> I did ministry largely in Makodi. And places like Makodi, you have little money, you can get a land and start building. Yeah. You now go to Abuja, you see a little piece of land. They say it's a billion naira. And you are wondering, what is the meaning of this? <laughs> Somebody gave us a land, and the land was so waterlogged. <laughs> to make things worse, they told us that it's, it's, a, it's, um, it's not, you can't build a permanent structure. So the way, there's a way Abuja works. It says a garden land, so you can only do tent. And also, okay, no problem. Let's start. But what do we do to manage the foundation? Yeah. We have to raise the foundation to the height of a building. Oh, that wow. in over 40 to 50 million. Oh, wow. Because of the size. Yeah. Then we have to build a retaining wall because there's a water body that passes. Yeah. That's over 18 to 20 million. Then we have to build a mini bridge for cars to pass. <laughs> That's over 40. So to do foundation and to build access alone yes, is yes. over 120 million. <laughs> To come and put tent. I say, Kai, <laughs> let's leave that land there first. <laughs> let's leave that. Let's that, leave that project. That the earth is the Lord. <laughs> I'm sure there's another part of land yeah, somewhere. So if there's something I'm looking for, honestly, it's a confession yes, time. Yes, sir. It's for God to give us a befitting land yes, and then sir. empowerment to build a structure so that people Amen. can come. We, we, you don't Amen. want to start thinking of because yeah. you are renting a tent in Abuja, you are yeah. paying 30 to 40 million yeah. in a year. That's oh. not about not set up yet. Yeah, yeah, true. So you true. need rest. We need that level of rest. <laughs> so that if we want people to pray for seven days, we can yes, come sir. and stay there and pray for seven days. Mm. If we mm. want to do world feast, we mm -hmm. can come there mm -hmm. and teach the word of God non-stop for three days. Mm -hmm. And people are not think we are not thinking yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we are Our not rented light, and all of these, that. All these ones there, but still chase so us out. That level of rest. Is what I'm trusting hey, God for. And that was one of our key words, though. A few, a few weeks ago yes. in church, that rest. It's too important. All right. Now, thank you so much for this, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've taken, uh, I mean, I enjoyed every single part of it. As in, it's like, uh, this is fellowship for me. It's even more than confession because it feels good to know that I'm not the only one going through the exact same thing. Uh. Bro, from another angle, our my engineer is here somewhere. You can hear me right now. He knows what we are dealing with with uh -huh. uh, our locations and and trying to move from one place to another. <laughs> oh Lord! But no, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's an honor, sir. There's a there's one there's one question we normally ask as well. Um, yeah, one thing you like about me, and one thing you don't like about me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll close with that one. <laughs> so my producer is shaking his head like, yes, ask that one. I hope I'm not missing anything else. So that, Can no, you imagine? No. I would say my own first. I really love, um, I mean, I love what you're doing. Uh, I love the, the humility as well. Um, and how you, they, they charge I mean, when you come, it's like a sledgehammer just smashing down all day. I'm like, I'm like, yes, yes. You don't even care where you go to. I'm, and I love that Dubai one as well. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. Because some people will get to England and start trying to speak more funny English that they didn't, they were not speaking when before. When I said the spirit of LGBTQ is judged. <laughs> exactly. My people started shaking. Hey, like, oh God. And I love that. I love that. I love I that image. I attacked it aggressively. They said, no, 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 don't say it. They'll ban your <laughs> channel. <laughs> and I was going to be there for another seven days. They said, they will arrest you here. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. So, no, I love that, sir. Thank I, you, sir. I've not found anything I dislike yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving me a, a way to also answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the truth is, um, I love the way you you really stand up to defend and to personally protect the interest of Daddy Gio. Um, it's, 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 sometimes there are people who want to apologize because their fathers are who they are. And so they cower away from some of the personal and sensitive responsibilities they should take. Mm. I think on one of the occasions I saw you was when, I think, you, you drove to the presidential villa to see the president and I saw that you were there attending to all his personal needs. Yeah. You know, there's a level, there's an age level they get to, these things become so personal. Mm -hmm. So you need somebody who is not just there serving because he's positioned to serve, mm. but somebody who is personal about it mm. so that daddy can last, so that daddy is not overwhelmed, so that daddy is not too stressed mm -hmm. and you have dedicated yourself 
to see that your life is spent to to help preserve him and to preserve him not just for him but for the body of Christ. So that that jealousy in defending his interest and all around the place it blesses me so much mm-hmm. and I think that's one of the blessedness of having a son mm-hmm. because when I also get old there are things that I can't share with everybody. If I have a son who is there to bear my personal weights and burdens mm-hmm. it will really be a blessing to me. And so when I see you do these things truly it blesses my soul and you are unapologetic about it you are so down to doing it in fact you see it as your own service to the lord yes, it's truly a blessing and i know that you've enlightened him of many 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 burdens because so many things he would not even say but you would know mm-hmm. would discern and you do for him you have made old age easy for him mm-hmm. and because it's easy for him we are here being blessed mm-hmm. you know every day so thank you for ah, for for, for hey, doing that. Hey, thank, thank you, you sir, and glory to God, thank sir. You. All to God, sir. <laughs> it's All to a God, blessing. sir. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Wow. So on that note, this is confession. Thank you so much for uh for joining us and uh, for being here. Thank you so much, Apostle. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for doing this. We you did not know this morning that you were going to end up in this. I didn't <laughs> but did I really confess anything? You didn't ask me. If I've had any force as a minister, no, but yeah, please, crazy. you know, I'm, I I didn't want to drive you too hard. Thank God you didn't. Minister, du- <laughs> <laughs> minister Duzi was almost crying. He was sweating even with the AC on. <laughs> no, no, I didn't want to. I didn't want to drive you too hard. But you said thank God that I didn't ask you. Don't worry, uh, don't God, worry. Uh, Next one, God, I would. God uh, has been faithful. Yes, God has been faithful. Uh, one yes, prayer, I, I pray to God. I say, please don't let me fall. Hey, Our messages hey. have been too judgmental. If mm. I fall, the body of Christ won't forgive me. They will yeah, kill yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't don't let me fall. Yes. Let me not fall to women. Let me not fall to money. Oh, because wow. if I do, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. apart from the fact that mm-hmm. the fate of many will be affected, mm-hmm. they will tear me apart. <laughs> And God has been faithful. Nah, thank you, sir. Thank you, <laughs> it's sir. It's an honor, sir. It's yes, really sir. an honor. Yes, sir. So, till we see you on the next one, this is Confessions with PLA. Um, our sponsors, we're saying thank you. Mimi's, today there's no food, so, you know, but thank you in, in advance. Um, and then for everyone else. And then, of course, um, to close out, uh, I think, Apostle, as you started at the beginning, please pray for us. And, uh, <laughs> and then we... Yeah, we jump out. Which camera? Are we no, you be the you should be the one. I to should pray. be the one that will pray. Let me connect to what is happening here. Ah, okay. Every time okay, I have the privilege okay. of coming to the redemption camp, I look for every opportunity to receive something. Hey. So you are not just praying for us; you pray for me. Ah, let me connect. <laughs> <laughs> all right help me on that one <laughs> father in the mighty name of jesus Amen. we are grateful for this uh this time of fellowship thank you almighty god for your son thank you for what you have been doing through him with him and what you will continue to do by him we ask almighty god that in every area of his life your hand will be upon him in jesus name Amen. you will keep covering him in the mighty name of jesus Amen. and lord please as he's minding your business, please mind his own in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let all be well with his family Amen. and of everything that is important to him. Let all be well in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we know that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. We are here in agreement, O oh God. That place that would be done with ease, without stress, land that they might not even have to buy or any way struggle father please give unto him in jesus name Amen. you've heard his heart's desires it is for your kingdom so please meet him at the point of his heart desires in jesus name Amen. lord we are pleading on our behalf on behalf of everyone else watching oh god that please you will not let any of us fall in jesus name Amen. you will not let any of us fail in the mighty name of jesus Amen. And Lord, that power, that uh, that tangible power that we yes. need from you, O oh God, to be able to do wonders for your kingdom. Father, please give unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. And all these things that the fathers possess, Father, please, yes. by mercy, let it drop unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And give us the, the humility, the grace, and the wisdom to be able to carry it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Almighty Father. Thank you. The most important part, oh God, don't let us be found wanting in your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. When the trumpet sound, count us worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, for whoever is listening here today and the word that has come out, even from all that we've shared, Father, please let it be a blessing and an healing to them in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' precious mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's truly been a great honor. Thank you you so much, sir.